I recently sat down at the Paramount Hotel in New York City with two cast members and a showrunner from the Weather Channel's newest reality series, Catching Hell, a show that dives into the commercial spearfishing industry following the world's most skillful hunters as they battle the dangers in the Gulf of Mexico. Take a look at what spear fisherman Lisa Rollins, Richie Zacker, and the show's executive producer, Paul O'Brien, had to say about Catching Hell. It airs Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Weather Channel. You're the showrunner, the producer. How did all this start? It uh, started with a spear fishing trip I took with my brother-in-law. Um, he took me out in the Keys. We went out one day, went down, shot a couple hogfish, and I got separated from him underwater. It was my first time out, and I came back up to the top after losing him underwater, and I'm like, wow, this is, this is crazy. Like, I, I wonder if anybody does this for a living. And then I started on a path to try to find out if anybody did, and that's where I got linked up with both of you, and uh, found that there's a history. yeah, there's a there's it was a really small group. It's uh, what would you say, probably less than fifty people less in the U.S. that can least. do it for a living. How long have you been doing it? I have been doing it since I was 19 years old. Commercial spearfishing, and I love it every every minute of it. And uh, Pal said he wanted the best, and I got he he got him. I am the best. <laughs> and you, Alicia, how'd you get it? Um, about 10 years ago, I had some personal tragedies that made me tap into um, how I was living my life and how I wanted to spend the rest of it. And so I started uh, thrill seeking and looking for adventure. And I started ballroom dancing and jumping out of planes and scuba diving and. I was hooked. So you had some bad things in your life and you decided to go nuts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's understand something, what spearfishing is. It's not throwing a net in and bringing up shrimp, right? Yeah, it's... What is spearfishing? Spearfishing is, um, we actually have spear guns and it's not like a normal gun you think. It's, a, it's a, a gun that can be anywhere from 50 inches long to maybe 55 inches long. It has uh, rubber bands on it type deal and we have to cock them and we have different methods. Sometimes we line shaft, which is actually a line connected to the shaft and the gun where you fight it, just you and him, or a lot of times on our side, uh, we do a lot of free shafting, which is just, it's, a, it's like an, a bow and arrow almost type deal. Is so, it a spear? It is a spear, but it's not like the normal spear you think. And um, you know, we try and get kill shots on our fish so we don't have to chase them around. So where do you go? You how, how many? How far out do you go? Well, it depends on where you're hunting. But where we filmed the show was um, about 100 miles offshore, um, around Tampa, Hudson, Florida. The middle grounds, yeah. the Florida middle grounds. Mm -hmm. It's a, one of the top dive destinations in the world, um, and it's a it's it's so far offshore that there aren't too many people that go out there. So these people like Lisa and Richie are able to get out there and, and harvest uh, the best fish that you can find in the Gulf. You go down with your goggles, right? Mass. Mass, yeah. You jump down, you got oxygen. Yep. Right? And you jump off the boat. What kind of boat is it? Uh, I work on a 41-footer, and... Um, I have a 28-foot 28, um, <laughs> 28 little piece of boat that falls apart quite often, but we love it and call it home. How many people on the boat? Three. I'm the only woman on my boat. Actually, I think I'm the only woman on the show. Um, you there's, had three. There's three of us Yeah, on actually, our there's our three on too. every boat. And does someone stay on boat when the two, the other two? Jump? There's always someone up top at all times because you don't want to anchor or drift dive with nobody in the boat because you come up and the boat's gone. We're sink. <laughs> and that's bad. bad. You don't <laughs> want that. That's one of the most biggest fears is coming up and the boat's not there. When you spear the fish, you bring it right up. No, we uh, we put them on a stringer. We uh, dispatch them. We kill them and we we carry them on on stringers because you can't really keep going up and down because you can get uh, hurt like that. You can get the bends. How many might you spear in a day? Um, hopefully you get as many as you can put on a stringer. Um, you know, but that's not how it always works. Sometimes you go to a spot and there aren't any, but other times it's a big payday and you go down and you fill up the stringer and come back and high five everybody. You might do how many hours a day doing this? Oh, all day. From the sun up till sundown. You don't stop. You're and a because tired? Yeah. Absolutely, it takes it out of you big time. And because we're so far offshore, we have to live out there for three or four days, which... Where were you when they're doing this? Out there with them, underwater with them. I was getting chased out of the water by sharks. <laughs> so you start like what time in the morning? Uh, normally 7.30, 8 o'clock, depending on the depth we're in, because you need at least some light to see down there once you get down there. And it's on a rotation basis. So if, say, for example, if Richie goes in the water, he'll dive, and when he comes up, the next person goes in, and when that person comes up, then so we're just rotating all rotating, day long. Yeah. You take any risks like sharks? Yes, sir. And we actually have, you know, many a risk with them. Um, I've Shoot had a shark. 
Only if you have to, you know, try not, you, you know, you respect the animals, but it's only if it's necessary. And luckily it's been many, many years since I had to do that. But I have been attacked by a tiger shark. It was like a 12 footer and he put his head right in my chest. So that's always in the back of my mind, but I'm in their environment, but they always have to know that I'm number one in the water when I'm down there with them. They're not number one. Where are you when all this is going on? I'm underwater with them. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm down there sort of keeping an eye on how shooting. everything's going. No, I'm, I'm just either, I either sort have a producing. camera with me or I'm producing underwater. It's a world like you've never seen. I mean, you, you go down and there's so many different kinds of life right in front of you from little bitty plankton and little little creatures up to giant fish just swarming all around you. Are people Amazing. doing this all over the world? Are there Russian spearfishes and Japanese spearfishes? And- there's yeah. spear fishermen all around the world, and but not all of them do it for a living. But it is a worldwide sport, though. And w- what we consider a sport is our living. When you don't do it for a living, you mean you're just doing it to catch and take it home and That's eat. That's recreational yep. spearfishing, right? You this is commercially, fish, right? right? Yes, sir. And I do recreational, too, for fun if I want to take some fish home to eat but that. But who do you sell to? Uh, we sell to uh, individual wholesalers that sell it to restaurants, or some of them actually just sell it to the public. But our fish is such a demand because it is fresh-caught speared fish, and it's like the green wise fish because it's so fresh that there's a list of people waiting to get it. So it's sold before we even hit the dock. So they're eating it that night, maybe? Yes. Yep. If you've never wondered where you got your fish before in a restaurant, you're going to wonder now, after this show. Okay. There's some danger in this, right? Yes, sir. Been hit, right? Been hurt? Been hurt. Been hurt um, mentally, not physically, um, just by that, by the shark deal. Uh, But I sat out an hour and got right back in the water because that's what I have to do for a living. That's how I make my living. So I wasn't going to let that shark show me who was boss. Lisa's had some near-death experiences, though. I've had a few. Um, I was lost at sea, um, rescued by the Coast Guard at night by helicopter. Um, I was diving with a friend of mine who got hit by a boat and lost his legs from the knee down. Um, You know, spearfishing is an extremely dangerous profession. So why do you go back? There's something about the ocean that just keeps calling me. I can't stop. Um... You are entering another world when you go down there, and it's too alluring and too beautiful to not go. You have to be a great swimmer, too, don't you? Um, actually, the swimming, I mean, obviously, you need to know how to swim, but um, with the buoyancy compensator and, you know, the, um, handling yourself in the water, you don't have to be you got a heavy equipment on your body. Right. And if you have to fight a current, we're actually swimming into it. Then you have, then you yeah. get a workout real good. I wouldn't on that recommend dive. anyone go scuba diving unless they were a. Um, a now let's swimmer. take. The poor fish. <laughs> the delicious poor fish. Poor fish. And they're down there. They just—it's their environment. They're swimming around, and here you come. Mm-hmm. They know you're there, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. They fear you, don't they? They all fear me. Yes. <laughs> they know you. Yes. In fact, I happen to know that the word spreads around when you're down. Absolutely. He lets yes. them know when he hits, yeah. hits the water. He says, TGO's on the way down. They're down running there, hide, running you know hide. They're down there today. He's in New York. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, how about the beautiful girl that occasionally comes? She's a killer, too, oh, right? Oh, yeah, they like this one up to her. So they're trying to get away from you, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They... What's, what makes a great spear fisher woman? Um, tenacity, being being able to hang out with the guys and take all the, the big egos and the attitudes. And um, being competitive, actually, really helps a lot. And never quitting. How do you take aim when they, I mean, I'm trying to picture this. It's a moving target. It is. It is well, not shooting fish moving. in a barrel. No, but <laughs> still. Yes, it's, this everything is, not is a moving. Shooting and you're, you're aiming. It's a lot of people think it's shooting fish in a barrel. It's it always not. expression. It's not. You know, the fish are moving, and you have to get, you get real good at your aim, and you're taking headshots because you don't want to mess the flesh up and hit them in the body. So you always want to go for a headshot, which is a kill shot. But the one good thing is we get to pick what we shoot. You know, it's very so selective. It's very selective. So there's not like you know, you know all the fish. Though. I know all the fish. And I do too. And you got to shoot them in the head. Yes. yes. And we have no bycatch, which is beautiful about spear. What do you mean? We have. We don't, uh, we don't we accidentally don't kill, kill anything else. With other forms of fishing, like if you catch fish in a net or on a long line, you, you get all these other things caught. like turtles, you get fish that are too small, the wrong kind of fish, and those all just die and get thrown back into the ocean. With these guys, they're going down, they're specifically targeting just exactly the fish that they want that they know is going to sell. Any Moby Dick aspect to this, are there certain fish that, that 
you go after maybe all day and you can't catch this one fish. There's always the big grouper that you want. It, it, actually, that, that is a theme of the show for me. Because I started off as a recreational spearfisher woman, I'm always looking for the big trophy fish. And in commercial spearfishing, it's not about the, the trophy fish. It's about, it's about a making lot of money. Fish. Is it eco-friendly? Very. Absolutely. Yes, very. When will we see it? Once a week, every Sunday night at 9 o'clock. How many episodes. have you done? We've done 10. Yep, and then one more is a behind-the-scenes episode where you get to see how the show is made. Do we meet a lot of other characters like this? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, we've got the greatest we get to range know of characters. Them. There's oh, yeah. Characters. Absolutely. They talk during the show. We... <laughs> yeah, no, it's the, the beauty of the way we shot the underwater stuff, too, is we're using communication masks. So every diver underwater is able to talk to the other divers and to their captains up on the boat. Oh, so the, the spear hits the mouth. You kill the fish. You draw them back in. And it, put it and on a put stringer. Them, put them on a stringer. It's a big metal ring, and you and drag them behind you. where do you drag them? Behind you? You carry it in your hand. How That's many can you bring for. up when you... How many at one time can you bring up? Um, depends on how good of a shooter you are. I've, the most I've ever got on a dive was 47 fish. And that's a that's great a payday. And sometimes I've had my stringer filled up and I actually had to take one of my spare shafts because I carry three shafts, spears, and I actually started sliding them down the spear. And I knew that was a good dive then. And how yeah, much pay, would that be worth? That's, you know, anywhere from, you know, an 800 to to $1,000 dive, which is a great payday. And that's you do a great six dive. of those in a day. I mean, yeah. it, it can, it really adds up. You get paid right there? At the dock. We get paid at the dock. The fish house. And who's them. waiting at the dock? The fish house or the wholesaler, you know, either one. It depends. You know, and um, they take Is this year round? Yes, year round. Even when it's cold. As cold <laughs> as it gets in Florida. <laughs> And so how often do you do this? Um, we, every chance we get where the weather breaks and we can get out, we're actually called fair weather divers because it's not like fishing where you can go out and go out in awful conditions and fish on top. We're actually getting in the water. So there's the safety factor and safety concerns there. So, you know, we try not to go out in like five to seven footers. It happens we try well. and keep out under that. Do they keep records? Of, uh, do you have to pay taxes, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's heavily regulated. It's, it's yeah. so heavily regulated. Wow, this is going to be a big hit. You think so? For the Weather Channel, it's going to be enormous. And they're playing it at 10 o'clock? Nine. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on yeah. Sunday night? Yeah. We have 19-year-old kids. We have 41-year-old single moms. We've got 60-year-old 60 60 year guys. Yeah. I, I mean, it really, as long as you are tough, um, you love the ocean, and you don't wimp out, you can do it. The thrill of the hit. Yeah. Yep. That's a good Anybody way to can it. do it, but how good can they do it is the question. Not like you, man. <laughs> no, not at all. That was my exclusive conversation with stars Lisa Rollins and Richie Zacker, as well as producer Powell Bryan of the Weather Channel's newest reality series, Catching Hell. Sure to tune in to catch it, Catching Hell Sundays, 9 p.m. Eastern on the Weather Channel. And you can always find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.